Northern Territory farmer Marshall Haritas owns 1,400 mango trees on his property at Berry Springs. This would have been a, a branch full of foliage. In years past, his orchard produced 18,000 trays of fruit in an average season. That was before his farm, like many others in Darwin's rural area, became the victim of mango twig tip dieback, a disease that doesn't impact fruit quality but can drastically reduce yield. Well, last year was 4,000 trays, the year before was 7,500. Two of those years we haven't been near the place even to pick because we've known that it's, um, the fruit's it's not, so, not marketable. Until now, the cause has remained a mystery, leaving growers to improvise as they treat infected trees. We had water tanks on trucks and big fire hoses and wetting everything. And it seemed to stop it in its tracks. You think, oh, we've beaten it. Uh, but it'd come back about stronger, about two, two weeks later. But plant pathologists have finally had a breakthrough. Examining samples collected from across the top end, Researchers have now identified the fungi that cause mango twig tip dieback. We've discovered a group of pathogens that are associated with initiating these disease symptoms. They are a very versatile group of pathogens that can take advantage of a plant's stress response. Its research, the president of the Territory's Mango Industry Association says, could have come sooner. Narrowing down the issue can take a while, but yeah, I, I don't think... Um enough was done early enough to, to get to this stage. We should have been at this stage, you know, three or four years ago. The fungus responsible lies dormant in its host, only taking hold when the tree becomes stressed by environmental factors like extreme heat. And as average temperatures trend upwards, until more is understood about the disease, growers can only persevere in their pursuit for abundance of the territory's favourite fruit. Sam Parry, ABC News.